So it is inevitable that all car YouTubers at some point will start buying projects and turn their financial life into bankruptcy road. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it is my turn this time. One evening, I was scrolling the interweb, just like every car guy does, looking at auctions, looking at cars that we can never afford to buy. And then I come across cars and bids. Mr. Doug DeMiro, thank you for uh, uh, starting this journey for us. I found the perfect Lexus for me. And I've been kind of dreaming about a Lexus LS. I just love the LS430 so much. I've worked on so many of them. And I was always on the look for a pristine one. But one car came in front of me that I just could not stop bidding on. And ladies and gentlemen, that car is this one. This is a 2001 LS430, and at this exact moment, I should say hello and welcome to the Dumbest Automotive Channel because we are heading that road. Thank you very much, Hoovies Garage, Tyler, for ruining our life and having us follow your footsteps because this was a total impulse buy. I did not research this. I did not really look into much too much. And at first glance, this is just a 2001 LS430. Yeah, great does have some faded headlights and everything. But the problem with this LS430 is it has 628,000 miles. Sight unseen, I just bid on it, literally spent five minutes researching, just looking through its stuff, look at the service history real quick on Carfax, look at a few pictures, and I was like, eh, how bad can it be, right? And uh, this could be really bad, or it could be really good. That's what we're gonna find out in this video. Let's take a tour around it at my latest acquisition and uh, it runs and drives. I have, we have verified that much. We'll take it for a drive in a little bit, but uh, 628,000 miles, uh, one faded headlight, that's okay. This one though is uh, decent, the other one. And there is a lot of rock chips. And this is technically a one owner car. So the original owner bought it from new and this current, the owner I bought it from only had it for a few months. They probably bought it to flip it. Although flipping 628,000 mile cars, not the best idea in the planet. And as you'll find out in this video. However, let's continue our tour around it. So uh, the paint is surprisingly in good shape. I mean, this must have been taken care of because this is a crystal white color. You can see the uh, pinstripe at some point that burned itself into the paint. The wheels are surprisingly in good shape, except the uh, center caps are gone. A few chips and things, but overall, it's actually decent chrome wheels with Michelin Pilot Sports. I like that. And then we go to the door. The car is, uh, for lack of a better word, disgusting outside and inside in the transport that got us here basically blew a hydraulic line all over it so we had to really quickly wipe it down and it's still all over the place but that's okay mirrors in the it's there it's there this is very common to break on these and uh everything else i mean it's pretty straight there's a few scratches here probably from somebody throwing the seat belt then we have a mismatched tire and equally a nice wheel with a faded center cap that's okay, it's okay. And then we come here, and something happened here. Because if you look here, the paint is all chipped up and like cracked. Probably something hit it from the back and it was never fixed. And I can actually, just by looking at the bumper, it's pushed in and the, the whole trunk is pushed in. It works-ish. And then right at this point is when I start to worry. You know, I just bought this car site and seen 628,000 miles. I trust Lexus Engineering that it lasts this long, but the problem is the in-between. The people that owned it, and this is the moment of concern. Watch this. Two broken license plate screws, and then two drilled holes into the body. You just don't do that. And I'm hoping this was not the way this car was treated. Perhaps the guy in between the original owner and me did that just because he didn't want to deal with the broken license plate bolts, but let's hope the rest of the car is not like that. Then we go on this side, more scratches all over the place, but what I'm shocked by is how clean the paint is. And yeah, well, that's okay. It's okay. This wheel probably is the worst one. First, it has deep edged itself, and then we have a bunch of heavy gouges on the wheel. But again, another mismatched tire. This is tire brand number three. Hey, 
for all it needs is some wheel cleanup, maybe an accident repair and some hubcaps, center caps, we're okay. This side is actually the worst side. It's have a lot of dings and scratches and all over the place. And this color is really hard to keep clean because keep clean and matching on camera probably looks like seven shades of white, but it is one color. And I think this has never been an accident. That's all cool. And this mirror is, it's, it's working. It's good. Let's look at the inside. And this is where uh, usually in LS 430s, you look at the back first. Okay, that's okay, just complaining, it's okay. Let's look at the inside. Um, for lack of a better word, this interior is filthy. And the best part is, the person that I bought the car from, he told me that it was a lot worse and they have spent significant time cleaning this to make it a little bit more presentable for the sale, but it is, disgusting. There is a surprise here that I'm going to debate if I should show you or not. No, we're not going to show you that. That's disgusting. But uh, somebody had a fight with the seats here. I'm wondering if it's a dog or something because somebody really had a fight with this seat, which uh, otherwise everything is here. The leather is like very dry. The headliner has a few stains, but it's not bad. I see signs, if you look over here, up at the headliner. If you look here, I see signs of cleaning. Somebody has been cleaning this, but perhaps they didn't spend enough time. They didn't love it as much. Then we look in the front, and uh, this is where... Mm, I mean, the pictures were clear. The seat is not in good shape. We do have some uh, bolster wear right there. And the center console lid and the bottom of the seat. I mean, 628,000 miles. I can understand the driver's seat being a little worn. This uh, steering wheel leather, half seen better days. You know, hey, it's ready for me to peel it off and replace it. But otherwise, things are decent in this interior. Let's actually check out a few things here. I mean, disgusting but it all works it's all here that i can work with headliner here is actually cleaner than the back i wonder who who owned this car and why they drove it this much some random cds and uh lottery ticket yeah that's that's a bad lottery to win the original owner's manual i like that looks very lexus of bellevue or however you say that. Okay, some Costco receipts for tires, some parts. That's normal with cars like that. But you know what? It's all here. So this is it's looking not too bad. But the real test story is, let's start looking under the hood because that's when I really start to worry. Not here. Here, everything you can fix or just live with. But stuff under the hood is when I start to worry. Let's go check that out. All righty then. Okay. Are you gonna stay? Okay, he's probably been replaced, the hood shocks. This is the 3UZ FE, possibly one of the best engines ever made by Toyota and Lexus equally. I love this engine, it's really in good shape, but let's take some of these covers, which this one is just sitting here, and somebody's really been cleaning here, Oh, it says they spent as much time cleaning under inside the car as they did here, but oh well, can't complain. What I like about this is all the covers are here, so that's that's a good sign. Although I already see something so fishy, it is unbelievable. We'll get to it in a second. Okay, well, there is an engine, it runs, that's good, and then let's talk about the first 
enormous red flag. The first thing is this car came from Washington State. Many people think Washington State is actually a rust belt. It is not. They just have a lot of rain. Rain doesn't rust things. Not like salt. They don't have snow. Or at least where this car came from. Let's look at the first major red flag. And this is, I hope, is not the theme for this car. But we pay our attention right here to uh, this. This is a disintegrating heater valve. And somebody in their infinite wisdom decided, nah, why do we replace this 100 buck part? Let's just bypass it and call it a day. I mean, this is the major red flag. This is what really gets me worried. Who has been working on this car and hacking it up? I mean, the amount of work that went here to bypass this valve is monumental. If you would have just spent that much effort in fixing this right and just getting this hose that broke, this valve, we would have been fine. And then the other, there's a bolt here that I call the LS hack bolt. This bolt, every mechanic that has never worked on LS's always breaks it or forgets to put it back. This one, of course, is missing. My favorite zip ties on hoses, that's usually never a good sign. And then my second favorite thing is warm clamps and an aftermarket hose. And the best part is this looks like an original hose with a correct style clamp. That's okay. We can work with that, but let's kind of look around it. I see the uh, master cylinder looks like it's very fresh. That's been replaced. So that's good. I don't think this is an original one. Actually, it does say ASIN, so I'll fly with that. ASIN is good. There has been a significant amount of service history. I mean, I've never seen a car, Carfax with this much history on it. But we look at the other stuff, coils. This one is Denso. This one has handwriting on it. And these two don't say anything. They're probably eBay coils. And uh, this one, the insulation is about to come off of it. The wires are about to come off of it. Uh, this is just not good. And let's look inside the engine. I've seen cleaner engines. I mean, look at this cap. This cap doesn't look too happy. I've seen cleaner engines, but again, 628,000 miles. This is the original engine. Not too bad. How about the trans fluid? How does that taste like? Ew. That's, yeah, that's not good. And the oil dipstick's all bent. I am starting to really worry, folks. This is... There's a lot of signs of Hacksville, and that I don't like. The oil is relatively clean. It's okay. And then there is an oil leak right here, which looks like it's been hemorrhaging for a while. You look right, right in this area, right here. See all this wetness. It's not crazy, but there is a lot of oil there. And equally, if we pan across here, we look at, that looks like a brand new belt tensioner, but then the power steering, if we come right here, see a lot of wetness. And the first thing I noticed about this car when we first got it, was before we even drove it, I checked the fluids, the power steering reservoir was empty. I mean, you look at this reservoir right here where it sits, it looks like it's full. Folks, that's how dirty the fluid is. This is actually not the fluid level. This is just a stain. So that's probably what the owners looked at it and like, oh, it's fine. Well, it's not. This is starting to worry me a little bit because there's, this car can easily last a million miles with good maintenance, but I see a lot of signs of, for lack of better word, hack mechanics working on this. There's no better way to call them. Sorry, hack mechanics. We also care about you, but we wish you would do better. Before we put this car in the lift, let's go take it for a drive. Let's see what, how it drives and what else we find on our test drive. Then we'll put it on the lift and see what's what. So we know how badly in trouble am I and how many hours of explanation I will have to do to my wife to justify this absolute impulse purchase. Let's do that. Let's take this thing for a drive. It's, we haven't been driving it much. All right. 
Let's start it up. And the first thing it's gonna do is sing what's wrong with it. The battery is really dull. Let's hear it. The Lexus Link system is active. Good. And then? A Lexus Link system error has been detected. Please contact your Lexus dealer. Well, that's okay. 600,000 miles, that ought to be broken. And then, uh, I mean, it's cold. It's a cold start. It's been sitting outside here for a while. This uh, tilt motor don't work. Telescope work, but it's really not happy. There we go. That is not happy. I mean, you get a car with 150,000 miles, this doesn't work, let alone 628 and 066. Disc read error, check disc. That's uh, a common thing, and actually, the radio doesn't uh, doesn't really do anything. So that's another thing we got to look into. But surprisingly, the oscillating vents work. That's pretty cool. I'm shocked by that because usually these go out on the LSs. These two work, and then the mirrors fold. Let's I get them to fold. There we go. That one is a little not too happy about the fold, but they work. See that that didn't fold very much, but. It works. It's good. Goes into drive, so that's good. Cracked windshield. Immediately VSC light off. Well, that's the worst of it. We're in good shape. But the other thing is, transmission is not extremely happy when it's cold. Again, 628,000 miles. That's okay. Give the old lady a little bit of space. But everything else, I mean, If I told you this car has 170, 180,000 miles, you'd probably believe me because whisper quiet. Of course, the uh, Tesla graveyard, we passed it. We'll show you guys on the way back. It's growing, ever growing. Let's get back to our LS here. I immediately hear a wheel bearing noise. It feels like from the back we'll pick up some speed. Over bumps, there is like a small noise, but let's punch it here and see what happens. Ooh, that transmission is not happy because it's still cold. They're not going to push it. This stays up. And it's pretty smooth. Hear that wheel bearing noise. Swerve a little bit. Yeah, when you turn right, so it must be a left rear bearing. But otherwise, I mean... It's an LS, drives like an LS, doesn't smell like an LS, doesn't smell very good. It would have to be said. But it works, brakes, let's see. Oh, brakes vibrate a lot. I'm assuming they're the rears because the steering wheel is not. The front brakes are brand new. We're going to look at that when we inspect it. But hey, other than the radio and the VSC light on and the disc error, and the cracked windshield and the Lexus inform whatever doesn't work drives like an LS pretty quiet and the wheel bearing and this doesn't just there we go and there's a cigarette in there it's not very nice not very LS like and this is torn we'll, we'll look at the interior but now it's a little bit warmed up trans shift smooth already we're a few minutes into it folks very impressive 628,000 miles perhaps I haven't completely lost my mind and bought this thing it's very for lack of a better word it's disgusting and the person that I bought it from who is the second owner they said they spent a considerable amount of time cleaning it so if this is considerable amount of time cleaning it I only imagine how it was to begin with because it's still disgusting that's the word for it but I think there is hope because seats are a little worn, the leather is, oh my God, these brakes vibrate really bad now, folks. Okay, well, hey, just brakes. Let's see what other, let's do this. Okay, let me, I'm gonna just give it the beans. Other than that downshift being really unhappy, works maybe we'll service the transmission to see what happens uh, look at that fluid but uh bearing is really loud now but hey it's 
drives pretty smooth, no vibrations, no weird noises, a little bit of wind noise. Windshield's been replaced and it is cracked, so there is that. But you know what? Let's take it back in the shop. Let's see what we got. Let's see how bad of a disaster. Because I always tell you, you look at a car from the outside, yeah, it's like 25% of the story. You look under the hood, you get the other 25, and 50% of the story is underneath it. And that's what we're going to do right now. Because I do hear suspension noise. It just doesn't feel as stable. And the brakes vibrate. And uh, there's an unmistakable smell of burning. So something's got to be leaking. It does have an extensive service history from a shop. So we're going to see how well that shop has maintained this car. We'll go from there. And without further ado, I promised you to show it to you. The Tesla Graveyard. It's ever growing course can barely make the cars now they can't make the parts for them let's go in the shop let's check this thing out put it on the lift and we'll go from there okay let's start our inspection and the first thing is things are very oily down here and you look at this and the pictures that they took in the uh, auction just so very well covered that up but hey nobody in their right mind is going to buy a 600,000 mile car and expect it to be absolutely leak free that's just not going to happen and I'll conveniently stand to the side so it wouldn't drip on me because actually drips all over I mean one one minute's been here it's already dripped on the floor but let's start from the very front let's kind of come this way and look at uh, the fine hacksmanship so if you look over here we have these hoses which are generic hoses and this line is not even attached and oh here is my first zip tie you look right here that's my first zip tie very very nice very nice. And this line is just loose. Folks, whoever has been working on this, just been mending it. That's the typical thing with these. And I really just wish they didn't do that. This thing would have been in perfect condition if they would have fixed things right. These hoses are going to go, according to the current owner, this is a newer-ish radiator. I doubt that it's brand new, or at least it's been put in a while. I mean, we've only had it for like two, three months. Or it was used. Or aftermarket it says Denzel on top, but I have my doubts. Then we look right here. We have, if we even look up high, we have a few power steering leaks. The pump is leaking, the lines are leaking, and then we follow this high pressure line is leaking, the rack and pinion is leaking. Not a lot, but still nonetheless leaking. And then let's, while we're talking about the steering, if I move this, inner tie rod is loose here and then this one oh this one is horrible the inner tie rod is loose for lack of a better better description here is what i would do to this get a new rack and pinion get a new pump get all the lines and we're done that, that's what i would do here it's time to refresh this and i think we're going to do that there's a very ugly filter aftermarket not going to fly one more thing that I don't like is this aftermarket alternator. It looks very, very ugly. At some point, that's going to go, probably when we tackle timing belt or whatnot, because supposedly the timing belt was replaced every 100,000 miles. I don't know if that was true. We'll find out. Com AC compressor looks original. Uh, let's take a look at that. Looks original. does say Denso on it. Fortunately, some of the sticker is gone, so I can't really tell. This has either been replaced at some point with a Denso unit, so that's staying. That's good. And then we look at the major, major oil leak right here. This is really where all this oil, I mean, I'm sorry. This has been leaking for a considerable amount of time. And look at all this buildup right here of gunk. This has been leaking for a long time. Folks, there's a cover here. So I'm looking here. If we look right here, this is evidence of somebody resealed this and evidently didn't do a very good job because it's leaking probably worse than what it was. And again, we've seen enough hacks, hacksmith stuff here that uh, I'm not happy. One thing, the ball joints, at least these lower ones, they look original. And the top ones actually have movement. So we're going to get upper, lower ball joints 
I do not want the ball joint breaking on me. And we're going to put this. Struts are surprisingly in good shape. They're not leaking. They don't make noise over bumps. So I'm going to keep them for now until we, we don't have struts. These front brakes, they look like they were put yesterday, literally. They are aftermarket, and I hate them. But we're going to ride on them for a bit until they wear out. Then we'll replace them for originals. This control arm looks like it has been replaced at some point because this pushing, there is no way you have this much miles and this pushing looks like this. And then we look at the back and the transmission. There is a lot of oil leaks from the transmission and mainly the pan really, not really anything else. Although I'm looking up here, we might have the shaft seal that is leaking. We'll see, well, this needs to be cleaned up, but. I am also looking at the hack work of whoever did this. Um, well, we'll, we'll work with that. There is a bolt missing here. That's very nice. Very nice. That's getting replaced. I'm just going to replace the whole oil pan and that's it. We'll replace the filter and we'll go from there. Now, I did take the inspection cover. The rear main seal has also been done at some point. It is not leaking, so at least they did that right. But there is something about this car it is absolutely rust free. I mean, I see absolutely no rust. I mean, look at the bolts. Folks, this has been driven a lot. And actually, this, after, this uh, catalytic converter is aftermarket. This one is original, or at least OEM part, not aftermarket replacement. This is definitely aftermarket. Then we walk around the back, there is more oil leaks, oil leaks, and oil leaks. I almost feel like we should just. Pull the strands out, it's actually very easy to pull out of these and just reseal the whole thing. I don't know, throw some clutches at it, do something with it. So I'll see if parts are available for it because that might be a viable option. The exhaust is in excellent shape and, and usually you never see LSs here with 100,000 miles in Illinois. This will all be rotten mess. This is perfect, for lack of a better word, it's perfect. Then we go in the back here, flex disc right here is not in bad shape. I probably at some point we'll just put a new one. Oh, it rolls pretty smooth. Let's look at the other one. The other one is, oh, that doesn't look too happy. We got a few. This is not a crack, but this is a crack. So we'll probably just put flex disc. The pinion seal is leaking. Not surprised. I don't think I've ever seen one leak. These rear ends usually just last forever, and that's about it. CV boots in the back, they are good and original. Axles are original on this. Everything looks great here. Suspension is good. Rear shocks are appear original, and they are not leaking. So is this side. No leaks. Rear brakes are aftermarket, and they vibrate a lot. And they are almost there, so perhaps we'll just replace these. And as far as movement in the back, nothing. Nothing. All these pushings are good. I think everything here is original. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. Now, at some point, there's been a, you can see it burned off. It was a plastic bag stuck to the exhaust. Thank God that's gone. Mufflers are good. Usually, this is another common thing with these from rust, but these are decent. One mark that worries me is this one. I hope this, these mufflers are very expensive. So something again happened in the back here. I'm trying to look. Oh yeah, this whole thing is pushed in. Yeah, so this car was definitely hit in the back, like we talked. It's been pushed in and nobody fixed it. They just left it as is, because I see it is all crumpling up here and coming apart. No worries, we'll get to that eventually, but we gotta fix the mechanical stuff. The main thing I want to do with this car first is Safety. Then the uh, protect our floor. The first thing is I want to tackle is the suspension. That's an important thing. And then second, the oil leaks. Thing with these oil leaks, this oil pan is easy, but the upper oil pan is leaking as well. We want to do this right. I'm going to drop the subframe. Probably it makes sense at that point to replace the rack and pinion while we're here. We'll do the whole power steering job fix all the leaks. I want my car. I, I really dislike cars that leak. We're going to fix all these leaks. We're going to fix the suspension so it's safe. I don't like to drive this car when it's not safe. We'll fix some of the hack jobs. I will do that cool, that heater valve at the top because that is not good. And um, we'll drive it because I, I usually tell people 
you know, you buy a car like this, don't start fixing every little thing until you've driven it for a bit in case other stuff pop up. And that's what I intend to do here, but it's gotta be leak free. It's gotta be safe. And that's the main thing here, folks. So that is my recent acquisition, the 600,000 mile Lexus. And we have a mission with this Lexus. I want to get this car to a million miles. It has been done before by, it's, I think Matt got an LS400 to a million miles, gave it to everybody. But the only difference is, and something I do not wanna do, that car towards the end, everybody that gets their hand on it, oh my God, this is amazing, it has a million miles. But in my eyes, every time they showed the underneath of it, I'm like, this thing is ready for the junkyard. Nobody will tell you that because nobody really notices the big stuff. It was leaking oil everywhere. All the suspension was falling apart. Everything was completely gone because nobody fixed it right. This is one thing I will never do with this. I want to get to a million miles in this car and you lift it, you look underneath it, there is nothing, not a single drop of leak, nothing not working, everything be the pursuit of perfection that birthed this car from Lexus. This is the golden era of Lexus that is, I hope not long gone, but they don't build cars like this anymore. And this will definitely get to a million miles. And one thing I do is I practice what I preach to you. We will not go cheap aftermarket parts and partner with this guy and that guy just to get their name out there. I will go 100% OEM parts because these cars last because they are made well and we're gonna help it last even longer with original parts. My biggest concern about this car is the transmission. It is really not happy when it's cold. We're gonna try to kind of change the fluid, change the filter, clean everything out, clean the massive leaks that it has. That's the first thing I want to do actually, and see where it's at. And guess what? I am that committed to this car. If this transmission goes after 20, 30,000 miles, I will put a Lexus Reman transmission in it. We're going to treat this car like it should have been treated from day one, which it has not. And I'm surprised it actually lasted this long because I see so much hack work here. It is unbelievable and not just for this car. Folks, stay tuned for the full series on this car where we take it apart, fix everything, and do it right with original parts, with expertise. You see so many car builds on YouTube. They're all put together just to look good on camera and then two months later it falls apart. I don't want this to be the case for this. We will do this right. Make sure you're subscribed, turn on your notifications if you're new to the channel, and you will see part two and many other parts of us fixing this and then its journey to a million miles. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos, and until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.